Roger, can you hear me? What? Who's there? It's the Devlog God. You must stop making games in one hour. It's not enough time. Okay, I'll do something else. Very well. I must go now. Good luck. Thank you. This time, we'll be making a game inspired by bubble tanks. This is a game where you start out as a puny, tiny little bubble, and you have to kill other bubbles to absorb their bubbly essence. Absorbing enough bubbles will let you upgrade and become more powerful. This is a simple but addictive game that I spent way too much time playing. Now, let's waste even more time by making it ourselves. As always, we start out by making a new project. Since we have two hours this time, I think we'll be able to produce a better game. At least, that's the plan anyway. While Unity is loading, I waste no time and jump straight into paint. Since everything is going to be made of bubbles, we don't really need to put much effort into the art. So we have a blue bubble, a red bubble, an orange bubble, and a big blue bubble we'll use for the background. With all that imported into Unity, we can now start setting up our scene. So we drag in the background bubble and adjust the camera so it doesn't look completely demented. Before we forget, we need to set up the obligatory level manager and game manager. Heaven forbid we forget those. Now we can set up the player controller. Now I know what you're thinking. That looks like complete crap. You know what I say? Haha, <laughs> bubblegum brrrr! I just did that. Anyway, I set up the collider and keep working. I slapped together a script so that we can move the player around and this is the result. Then I did some dumb vector math so that the tank can look at our mouse and also so that the camera follows it around. At this point, the game's pretty much finished, so uh, devlog's over, time to go home, thanks for watching, goodbye. You're still here? Alright, let's keep going. So now we can move, but this game is about shooting other bubbles. It's not called Movement Simulator. So let's add a weapon. We already prepared the weapon visually, so we just need to do some coding to make it work. So bam, bam, shabam. Now, as you can see, uh... Now, as you can see, we can shoot, oh god. Finally, as you can see, we can now shoot at a steady pace. Now we can shoot, we need some enemies to shoot at. So I made a simple enemy, and gave it a simple brain. Now we have bloodthirsty noobs that try and come after us. They turn towards the player and if they're within a certain angle, they shoot and move towards. And if you don't move out of the way of the projectiles, you get destroyed. I have a really bad habit of leaving sound design till the very last minute. I understand that sound design is very important, so I did it a bit earlier this time. So now there's a pop sound whenever a weapon is fired and a different pop sound when an enemy is killed. Then I made it so that when the player gets hit it makes a balloon popping sound, which I think adds some much needed feedback. Around this time I noticed that it was really difficult to tell apart the player and enemy projectiles. I thought making the enemy projectiles smaller would help, but it didn't. So I made them darker, which looked great. I wanted to add a health bar, but due to time restraints I just made it a simple text, which looks like this in game. With the addition of the health, uh, bar, I added a power-up that restores your life. These get dropped when you kill enemies. Now, you might notice that the enemies seem to be floating downwards over time. This is because I put in a script to make them spawn over time, and in the prefab I forgot to disable gravity. That took me way too long to figure out, but anyway, now they're working properly. With 45 minutes left, the game is actually starting to feel like a game. Yay! With all of the basic gameplay out of the way, I think it's time to add some more content. I'll start by adding a new enemy. So I make a copy of the old enemy in the file manager just so that I can have a template to work off, and then I start moving things around. The idea for this enemy is it has two guns, but it can't shoot straight. Then I make another copy, and this one is intended to be one that shoots quickly but does low damage. Here we can see all the new enemies in play. Having more than just one type of enemy really adds some much needed variety. Now if you remember, at the start of the video I said this. Absorbing enough bubbles will let you upgrade and become more powerful. So I started working on a system to enable upgrades. To buy upgrades you have to spend experience points, which you pick up from the health bubbles. I made a button to allow the upgrade. 
and then I designed the tank that you can upgrade into. It has two guns so you do double the damage. It also has a little bit more health. When you can't afford to upgrade, the button stays greyed out, but as soon as you can afford it, it becomes clickable. But it doesn't work yet. I made sure the game knows which tank to upgrade to when you press the button. However, it still wasn't working. Turns out the scene was missing the standalone input module, which is a problem that I've had before. Without it, buttons on the UI just don't work in Unity. But now with everything fixed, the game's at a point where I'm actually quite proud of it. So we can finish with time to spare. And the game is done. You can play it in Itch.io if you'd like, the link is in the description. I'm actually playing it in Itch.io right now for this part of the video. I have to say, making a game in two hours is so much easier than making a game in one. Even though it's just one extra hour, it still makes it so much easier to put in a lot more content. As always, the project files are in the description too. And for now, thanks for watching and goodbye.